Hey, what's up guys? Today we've got a question for our buddy Mark. And he says, he's talking about a reality check. He says, um, the center of my palm is starting to hurt because I keep doing the reality check. You know, the, the reality check where you sort of press your finger through your palm and then in the dream it goes through, of course, and then in reality it doesn't. He says his palm's starting to hurt because of this. Um, are there any other reality checks I can do? <laughs> Bit, bit of a funny question, really. Um, obviously, if, it, if your palm's hurting, stop doing that reality check, find another one. So yeah, I'm gonna suggest uh, a few that you can try. Um, and yeah, I'll tell you my favorite one and why it's my favorite one. And I'll also suggest uh, another, another thing you can try at the, at the end of the video. So let's get started. The first reality check I would invite you to try is to pinch your nose like this um, and then try and breathe through your nose. So. What it feels like is in the dream, you'll pinch your nose and you'll try and breathe, breathe in, uh, and it, you'll actually hear like a, a whooshing sound of the air going into your nose. It's not actually air because you're in a dream, of course, but um, that's what it, it feels and sounds like, at least for me. Um, but yeah, so pinch your nose, try and breathe. In the dream, of course, you will be able to because you're not actually breathing air in the dream, but in real life, obviously, you won't, and you'll feel that very quickly. Another one is to look at some sort of text. So find some writing, maybe a book or a signpost in the dream. Uh, look at the text, read it, maybe for a few seconds, just pick a word or two, look away, and then look back at the same text and read it again. And the chances are it, it would have changed, it would be different, okay? So you know that when you do that in real life, obviously it's not gonna change. <laughs> You're gonna look away, it's gonna be the same when you look back at it, okay? But in the dream, it's gonna change, it's gonna be different. It might also seem like uh, almost cryptic sometimes, like a load of random symbols that don't actually make sense when you really look at it. Okay, so that's another one to try. Thirdly, is to look at a clock, and much the same way as the, uh, you know, looking at the text, uh, reality check works. If you look at a clock and then look away again and look back, it, the time will be different, it will have changed, okay? Uh, sometimes it won't even make sense at all. You'll find that there aren't actually numbers or the numbers will be jumbled up or there'll be letters or symbols um, or there'll be like, um, this happened to me the other night actually, there, there's more than two hands on the, on the clock. So sometimes on your watch, you know, you'll have uh, the minute, the hour, and maybe a second hand, right? Maybe a fourth uh, for like an alarm or something like that. Um, but sometimes in the dream you'll find like maybe just one, uh, one hand on the, on the watch, or maybe like eight or something random like that. So that's another good one is to check your watch. <laughs> um, so yeah, fifth reality check. I would uh, say to try is um, it's actually a mental reality check. It's not a physical one. But I'm gonna explain a bit about how it works and I'm gonna explain why it's actually quite a good one to try. So, normally you have a physical reality check, right? You'll try and breathe or you'll, you know, you'll uh, try and push your finger through your palm, look at some text, look at a watch, whatever the case may be. It's looking for something physical to have changed or not changed, right? Whereas a mental reality I think I covered this in a blog post before, is where you ask yourself a question or you're analytical about the world in some way internally in your head. Okay. So an example of that would be you are walking down the road and you see a car parked you know, on the side of the road. So you would ask yourself in your head um, lots of questions about that specific thing. So you would say like, why is that car parked there? What make is it? Does it look normal? Is it out of place in some way? Because this is a huge one for lucid dreaming. Is, uh, what's the word? Um, when something's not um, in the right context, you know, when something's out of context. So say if you're walking down the road and you see like a, a zebra walking down the same road, that's, that's unusual, right? It's not something that usually happens when you're walking around town. So you know that when something out of context like that happens, you're in a dream. Or at least you know that you should in some way test it. So you do another reality check, double it up with a physical reality check. Yeah. So the mental reality check I'd like you to try is to um, ask yourself where you were 10 minutes ago every time you see something slightly out of context. So say if you're walking down the road in, in town or whatever, and you see something that doesn't look quite right, or you get some tiny feeling in, in your mind that uh, something's unusual, okay? At that exact moment, do that mental reality check. Ask yourself, where was I 10 minutes ago and how did I get here? Retrace your steps in your mind to where you were 10 minutes ago or even an hour ago. Uh, and that sort of critical awareness will help you become lucid pretty much as effectively as a physical reality check would. 
Okay, so that's that's going to wrap it up for this one. I've, I've given you some examples to try if your palm's hurting from the other other reality check. Um, my favourite reality check is actually a combination of the, the one you've described, where you try and press your finger through your palm, and the mental reality check that I've just described. So I'll do both at the same time. Okay, so I'll literally be trying to press my finger through my palm at the same time as being aware of what's around me and thinking, where was I 10 minutes ago? How did I get here? And am I am I dreaming? That's the critical question, right? So I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, please do uh, subscribe to my email list. There's a link right at the top of the description saying like 35 free lessons or something like that. Uh, subscribe to the email list and then you'll be able to sort of reply to the emails and I can uh, answer your questions, make videos for you, that sort of thing. So. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, if you're new, please subscribe because that way you'll get all the video updates. I'm planning to do a lot more videos in the future and I don't usually email my list about the videos. It's more sort of lessons and blog posts. So if you want to get the video updates and make sure you don't miss any, uh, then please go ahead and subscribe right now and I'll see you in the next video.